Hey there, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be talking about ways that you can combine your interest in gardening and zero waste to celebrate Earth Day and to start having a more sustainable um, sort of home environment, gardening environment, etc. The project I'm going to be showing you in this video is how to create miniature greenhouses out of milk jugs. You can also use other beverage containers, but I'll just be using milk jugs today and you can use either full gallon or half gallon sizes. You're also going to want a marker or a sharpie and something to cut with, either a box knife or an X-Acto knife, um, anything like that that's going to be able to puncture these plastic shells. So gather your supplies and let's get started. So of course there's the chance that you're asking yourself, well, why would I even do this technique? Like what's the benefit of creating little greenhouses out of milk jugs? And there are a couple, like I said um, in the beginning, one of them is just to start cutting down on your own waste. Um, if you wanna save gallons throughout the year, this is a really cool project to use them all at once. Um, the other reason why you might wanna do this is if you're a gardener, if you have any plantlings that um, you would like to get started while there's still really cold weather out, you can start them in these little um, jug greenhouses and leave them outside even when there is still cold weather going on, even when there is chances of frost and your plants will thrive and survive really nicely. So the first thing that we wanna do is determine where you're gonna be creating your cut on your jug. We are going to kind of create a top flap that can be folded back to allow your plants to vent once the weather starts heating up, but before they're ready to come out of these jugs. So um, you can take your marker and I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a little dashed line idea of where to cut. You don't wanna be too far up the top and also not too far down the bottom because you do need to put a couple of inches of soil in the bottoms of these. And you wanna allow plenty of space for roots to grow, but also for the tops of plants to grow up. So same thing over here on the half gallon, I'm just creating a little dashed line so that I've got a tiny bit of a guide to show me where I'm cutting. Um, because once you get your box knife out, things, um, well, you lose your, your precise control. So go ahead and create some marks, do some thinking about what you might be planting and how much space you're gonna want at the top or the bottom, grab your cutting tool, and then go ahead and puncture in. After you've created your first puncture with your knife, if the knife makes you nervous, feel free to switch over to scissors and you can continue um, with your scissors and get kind of a precise line without worrying about cutting yourself. But I'm just gonna take my box knife and finish some cuts really quickly. And then I will meet back here with you and talk about next steps. So the first thing I really recommend that you do, and you can do this after you have your soil and your seeds in there, I'm just doing it so that, um, pre, so that you can see it a little bit more easily. I really recommend, and this is all based on um, the YouTube channel where I learned this method of greenhouse gardening. Um, and so I'm really not the master and I'm not the one who came up with this sort of method. I really recommend you check out the original channel that I will link in this video. But um, the gardener who I was watching and learning from recommended that you put the date that you are starting your seeds in here. So I'm gonna just put the date. And then once I have put in my soil and planted my seeds, we're gonna talk about how many seeds you try to fit into one of these. It's not an exact science. It's something that I recommend you experiment with, as does the gardener who I was um, watching the YouTube channel of. So what I really liked that she did is she used these little greenhouse um, jugs as an opportunity to experiment with um, how many seeds she put in, how much she spaced apart, um, if she put multiples together. And it really does kind of affect your total crop outcome at the end of your gardening season. Um, if you overstuff these, your plants may not do as well, um, but you also can fit usually quite a few seedlings into these depending on what you're planting and growing. So um, if the seeds that you're growing are gonna turn into something quite large, obviously you'll wanna be planting fewer seeds within there. Your plants are not gonna be able to grow to full size while they're in these greenhouses. They are gonna need to be transplanted at some point out of these greenhouses. So what you're gonna think about is 
what my plant is that I'm putting in here and what age of maturity is it gonna be when it's getting too big to be in this kind of thing. If I'm growing celery, um, which will be quite tall, obviously the celery will not grow to its maturity inside of this greenhouse. But since celery is so skinny and it's not gonna grow out and kind of mesh with other plants that are growing in there. Last year, I think what I did was I experimented with putting four, not just four seeds, but sort of like four pockets of seeds, one in each corner. And then I also did a jug where I tried five. So four in each corner and then one right in the middle. That ended up being a little bit too crowded, but that was sort of the fun of experimenting with this, um, was learning and growing and kind of changing what I'm doing this year. And so after you write the date, you can write some kind of description for yourself so that you know what you planted in here and how you did it. So let's say I was going to do, I'm gonna switch over to this bigger one. Let's say again, it's 412 and I'm planting my celery seeds. So I am going to put in that I'm doing five holes, five holes, and maybe three seeds each in each hole. And so I'll be able to tell in a couple of months, even really just one month, what this formula did for my seedlings. You could also just do this in a journal if you want, but I did like this method of just writing on my jug so that I have that information available at all times. The other cool thing about this is that I have pictures that I will be showing in this video that um, now I look back and I can see my pumpkin seeds from last year in those pictures in the jugs. And I also have information about how I planted them. And my pumpkins were super successful, so I wanna reproduce that. And the final thing that you're gonna wanna do is uh, add some holes. So poke some holes on the bottom for some drainage. You can also add some venting um, holes to the top if you would like. Although what I think works really well is just taking the cap off for venting. So you don't necessarily need to poke holes in the top if you don't want to. And again, that's why we also are able to pop this and really vent things once it gets too warm out, but they're not quite ready to transplant out of the jugs. So let me just put in some holes and then it's time to get to the actual planting and you don't have to do like crazy actual circular holes you can just kind of make gases that as long as they'll let some water out and not let your roots just sit um, in standing water it works one thing that I forgot to mention um, is that you do not only have to use milk jugs for these greenhouses you can take really pretty much any kind of plastic container that you have um, Beverage containers are usually really good for this, but there are other things that you can, you know, transform using this zero waste method. But really anything that is going to be um, like a closed container that you can get to seal again with some tape and that has something for venting ideally, although you can always poke holes. Um, anything like that is gonna work for this sort of project. And you can even experiment with doing it with colored uh, plastic so like I have a lot of sprite two liters at my house and I think I'm gonna try those out this year I don't know how that will affect the growth of the plants if at all but it's gonna be fun to learn a little bit about that hey there welcome back um, we're about to finish up our little milk jug greenhouse project we are all ready to plant our seeds now that I put in soil next thing we're gonna do is drop the seeds in in this jug, I'm going to be putting my pumpkin seeds. Uh, this variety of pumpkin, if I'm saying it correctly, is Rouge Vif de Tom. And it's um, super beautiful, like scarlet orange. And it did really well for me last year. So I actually had really good luck with just doing one pumpkin seed per two liter jug that I was doing last year. And they grew up beautifully. I'll show pictures of that in a moment. But for now, um, I wanna kind of experiment with putting three in here and just see if they get too crowded or if that would be a good use of space or what. Uh, pumpkin seeds, they don't have to go down super deep. Um, yeah, on the instructions for pumpkins, you actually sow directly into the ground. But again, I was so excited last year and I'm just gonna keep up the routine because it worked so well, I am gonna get them a jump start in this little greenhouse. So they just need to be covered with about one inch of soil. Um, if you were planting them in the ground, there are hills and whole like configurations you have to figure out. But for this purpose, this experiment, I'm just gonna put one in this corner, one over in this corner, and one right here. 
cover them up with a little bit of soil and I will water them in really, really well in a moment. On this jug, I haven't yet written what I planted, so I'm just gonna quickly write the date. It's April 12th. And I have three holes with one seed each. And this is pumpkin. Cool. So that jug has my seeds and now I'm gonna switch over to my other one. I already pre-labeled this, so I decided my destiny and this is gonna have my celery seeds. So I'm going to put in five holes, one in each corner and one right in the middle and see what survives. I did not actually have luck with my celery taking in the ground last year. It did really, really well in one of these jugs and then I put it in the ground and it just wasn't happy and I didn't pay it enough attention. So this year, I'm hoping to rectify my mistakes. And by the way, the reason why you um, you can notate or you cannot, it just depends on what you prefer, but telling yourself how many seeds you put in each hole, maybe it doesn't matter as much with things like pumpkin where the seeds are gigantic and you, you can just tell. But with celery, these are the seeds. Literally, they are so tiny. Um, you can see them next to my pinky. They're super, super tiny. So it's actually really hard to just grab one of them. Um, and it's maybe even hard to be specific enough to get three. So I just kind of put my finger down. I get several on there and then I drop them in the hole. And so it's about three seeds per hole. It's not perfect. It's an experiment. That's totally okay. Take three more, put them in that hole. Take three more. The cool thing about celery seeds is that they're so very tiny that you don't really cover them up. They just sort of sit there in their hole until they take off. All right, doing this on camera was difficult, so we'll see what happens. So there you go. You've got your seeds planted. I'm going to go get these watered and then we're gonna do the final step of sealing the greenhouse jug so that it will stay nice and warm. Even if there is an unexpected frost that occurs late in April or early in May, you can have your milk jugs out and you do not need to worry about your little plantlings getting hurt by that. All right, and here we are. Um, you can see I've got this jug sealed off. You don't have to be super precious about this. Um, it doesn't need to be completely perfect. So I tried my best to get it lined up um, to get a good seal as I went. But you can see back here in the back that like, there is a little tiny opening that I'm not going to tape up. It's really, it's okay. Um, this tiny little bit of seal is not going to contribute towards your plants getting frostbite. Um, but that is really all you need to do. And then when you put this outside, if it's still very, very cold, you can kind of pop the cap for some ventilation. You can kind of just softly leave it on there. If it starts to get a little bit warmer, I would take that off. You'll see condensation forming along your milk jug if it's getting really warm and humid in there. And then um, if it's still not time to transplant your, your seeds, but they're, um, you know, getting crowded, eventually in the spring, you can just cut this tape and pop the top um, open and leave it that way until you're ready to transplant. And it's really hard to show you how to do this on camera, but again, there's nothing much to it and you don't have to be super precise. Um, just take some strips of tape. You can also use duct tape. I did that last year and it did not in any way harm the plants. It didn't affect like the amount of light they were getting or anything. You certainly wouldn't want to like tape the entire thing. Um, if you're using duct tape, light does need to get in, but just take your strip and hopefully you aren't doing it one handed like this at home. So it's a little easier, but then just close the top as aligned as you can get it, lay your strip flat and do that um, a couple more times to get the major holes closed. And then there you go. You've got your little milk jug greenhouses and they will grow you some pretty hardy little plants before you're ready to put them in the ground. To wrap everything up, I just wanted to show you guys some pictures of some successful little greenhouses that I've done in the past. So this first photo is of some flower seeds actually that did really, really well. Some night scented stock seeds that enjoyed growing in this environment until they were ready to transplant. And this next photo is just showing you some celery starts that I had up in that top area. Again, they really liked the greenhouse environment, so I'm gonna need to figure that out more this year. 
and perhaps most exciting to me of all, my favorite plant that I've ever grown, my pumpkin plants. Um, you can see them, they're doing super well in a two liter bottle greenhouse here. Um, and next is some lettuce. So in this photo, you can see that I've got uh, a couple of different experiments happening with the lettuce in terms of how many seeds I've got going on. In this next photo, you can see what I was talking about with the condensation that's gonna form around the top of your greenhouse. So you'll know if it's getting too warm and humid in there, you don't wanna to see too much condensation. Your plants do need some fresh air occasionally. If you see this starting to happen every day, it's probably time to cut that tape and vent your plant. And finally, you can see some successful little lettuce starts that um, took off and every single bit of lettuce that I planted in these greenhouses ended up totally thriving in my garden boxes later on in the summer. Hey there. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick check-in because I have had enough time after planting my seeds that they have started to sprout. And I figured why not just show you at the end of this video what you can maybe be expecting if you plant some seeds in your own tiny greenhouse. So it's been eight days, it's April 20th. You can see, I've got my information here. I planted these pumpkin seeds on April 12th. And I was amazed to look inside this milk jug today and see how much growth uh, these little guys have done in just eight days. Look at that, that's crazy. They're so big. They're like at least four and a half, maybe five inches tall right now. And the root growth is also just totally insane. If you can see on the video, look at all those roots that have formed already. So just wanted to show you what you might be able to expect if you wanna plant your own seeds in your greenhouse. Um, you're gonna have some really cool growth. Over here, I've also got my little flower seeds. They're still trying to sprout, so nothing yet. And the celery, um, there are little sprouts in there, but it's gonna be hard for you to see on camera. So just wanted to show off my pumpkins. So exciting. I hope you have lots of fun growing your own seeds and your little greenhouses at home.